Yeah. Confidence that God is putting there by His Spirit. Yeah. So without any further hesitation of me, I'm just going to turn the pulpit over to Him. I'd just like to make an announcement, man. <laughs> Let it be studied here. Let me think of that something. <laughs> I certainly enjoy being here every time. Our journey is getting close to the end now of us staying with you because uh, we got another meeting coming up right away in Chicago, and I've got to have the, um, the family back in Arizona pretty soon. And um, they've never had their summer vacation yet, and I'm supposed to take them for a little ride somewhere in a few days. And then I'll probably be away one, one day, one of the Sundays, and then the following week I'll begin in Chicago. Then I've got to come right straight back on a Monday and take them to Arizona. And now, uh, I just hate to come in of a Sunday morning, take that a time where everybody's refreshed. Sunday night, you're always tired and wore out on Sunday night. And then turn the Sunday night service over to our pastor. That's, uh, that's kind of bad. But uh, I hate to do that. And yet, on Sunday night, I would, uh, 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 Sunday night, they have a service Sunday night, and a whole of people so late, many of them coming here from way down in the south and, and way north and they have all right. sometimes to drive day and night just to get here for one service then go back and that's the reason I try to make it on Sunday morning when I come gives them a chance to go back loyal faithful pilgrims Amen. Uh, I appreciate yeah. them they drive through sleet rain and everything else to get here across the country hundreds of miles just for one little service so uh it makes me feel grateful to God and to these people for their great for their great support and what I'm trying to tell to the people to be the truth. Amen. I believe this is the truth. Yes. I, Amen. With all my heart, if there was anything different that I thought was better, I, I'd certainly first go. I won't ask anybody to go anywhere that I don't go first to find out what's right or not. I yes. wouldn't ask Amen. any person. To, to make a step in God that I hadn't already made and know that it's the truth. First, it must be the word of the Lord. Amen. Then I'm going to step and see if it's right. And then if it's right, then I can say, come on up this way, you see. Just making the way. And now, I think any minister ought to do that. Or to first go himself. He's supposed to be a leader. A leader of people. Not speak something that he wouldn't put his hand on himself. We should go and yes, be leaders of the people. This morning... I had a very odd, peculiar experience here in the pulpit, and that was about uh, the last part of the message. I wasn't aiming to say it that way, see. but uh, I guess it's already said, and there's nothing I can do about it now. But then I got home, got studying about it, and had a little family reunion today of just my brethren and them. Mama's gone, and we used to meet at her house, and now we are going up to the Lord's. We had a nice time up there this afternoon and talking. Katie was along. We sang some songs, played some hymns and things. Now, I think maybe uh, next Sunday morning, if the Lord is willing, Amen. if Brother Neville don't care, I, I'd like to have a healing service, just dedicated only to healing. Yes. And I, I think with the message this morning, the way the Lord seemed to lead me to bring it, bring it out, ought to kind of encourage us a little bit, you see, to, to really believe. We, are, we play around and we, we take different things and talk about them, but then when it comes to a showdown, that, that's something different. As um, uh, the, someone was telling, I believe it was my brother back there, telling a, a little story today about a man, uh, a minister, and his, uh, some of the, one of his congregations, he said he could walk a log. He said, Pastor, sure, the Lord's with you. He said, I can pack a log across my back. I want to go across, sure, the Lord's with you. And he went and done it. He said, I can pack a log and wheel a wheelbarrow across the same dock. Sure, Pastor, the Lord's with you. Your faith can do anything. He said, I can put you in the wheelbarrow and pack the log. He said, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Different. 
when you're included in yourself. Now, that's, it's mighty good for us to say here, Amen. It's mighty good for us to say, I believe that's true, but then put it in action. That's right. And then put it in action. As I brought that statement this morning, the people is laying in the shadow of Peter, they never even asked for prayer. I've went into many homes watching you. Pray before go. You just go in there with an awning and don't even pray if the people walk out on their heels. Amen. 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 I've seen it done so many times. See? You've got to have somewhere to place your faith. Yeah. You've got to believe it. And um, I believe that the hour is approaching, and now is, and I realize that this is not a tape service. They might make a little one for themselves, but this is not a tape that goes out across the country. Uh, the, this, what I was speaking of this morning, has brought us right up to the climax, and that's the reason I'm going to take next Sunday for a, uh, a healing service, because of the sense of being home, I've told you about the visions and what happened and everything, and brought it up why I've done all these things, and then this morning bring it right up now to that last pull. Now, it's my time for consecration to God. God's time to speak to me. See, I, uh, I must just have a little change in my own life. That it, not as I think that I'm wicked, but I, I want to feel a little more closer to people. See, the people that I have tried to tell the, this gospel truth to, and they turn their back on walk away and laugh at it. Now, to me, that seems like it's an insult. I don't care to me, but to the things that I've been saying, it's the truth trying to help them. Like shoving out a boat and say, here, here, just cross over. Here, get out of that swelling stream. You're going to die. You're going to perish there. And they just laugh at you and walk away. Well, to me, it feels like if they walk away, there's Amen. nothing more I can do about it, see, that I can do. But I want to run down the bank now and persuade them to come on back. Yes. And I've got Amen. to have that feeling, see, because I know there's somebody out there that hasn't come in yet. And I'm, I'm going to fish till the, uh, uh, he said, the last fish is caught. Praise and I, Praise I want to do that. Now, and now, in order to do this, I'm expecting something to happen in a prayer meeting. Something, and many of you remember the vision of the, of the last pull, that third pull, rather. You remember? There was something happened just before that. I've seen that light come and go down into that place and said, I'll meet you there. Now, I... I'm looking for something to happen. Here, years ago, it used to be that the services and that discernment would make me so weak, I'd stagger. Many of you remember that. Just get to a spot that's standing up, had Jack Moore on one arm and Brother Brown on the other and walk me up and down the street for an hour after service. And I just had, was trying to think of where, where I was at and what was taking place. And then all night, lay there and think of it and sob and everything else and wonder why they didn't accept our Lord Jesus. Then he told me the vision, one time you'll meet a lady that will come to you wearing a brown a suit, and she'll be packing a little baby and a blanket. And from that time on, you'll have strength to endure stronger. Well, I told you all that, and in Chicago, it happened that night when the little Presbyterian lady, when her own pastor sent her down out with a baby, I believe it was his brother, or one of them was a, a doctor, he said there's not a hope for the baby. Unless Almighty God touches him. he went. She went and told her pastor. Her pastor said, I am, I am not uh, qualified, he said, to, to act upon this divine healing because uh, I don't, just don't have it within me, the faith that it takes to do it. Now, that's, uh, that, that's been honest. Though. He said, I don't uh, just have it in me. He said, but I was at one of Brother Branham's meetings, and I advise you to take the baby to, to Brother Branham. And the doctor had given up, and it was going to die. And the little lady walked in there where I was having a, some sort of a, a service for them, little Catholic children that had got burned up in that school up there. You know, you remember when it was? was having that service, and coming right down the platform comes that little lady with the brown suit on. My wife and them was sitting there, and I said, turn and look, look all around, and see if they're standing there, and happened to be that... Just before it come up, I believe Billy Paul and them have been talking to her wife or some of them. She was a lady with the little babies. And the lady walked up to the platform. The Holy Spirit revealed the whole thing and healed the baby there and walked away. And since then, I just don't get tired. See, it don't bother me. Amen. Uh, I just go right on and on. Now, 
I'm looking for something to happen to start that third pull in the mark. And uh, uh, maybe the next Sunday morning healing service, maybe it produced that. I don't know. Amen. I think for us to do would be tell your people, get the sick people. Now, for a healing service, we got to consecrate on sick people. Get your sick people and get them here early next Sunday morning, say by 8 or 8.30, and uh, we'll give them a prayer card if they come in the door, however they do it. And um, then we'll have a prayer line and pray for the sick. And you see what the Holy Spirit will do. I believe he'll do wonders if we'll just believe him. Amen. But we got to believe him for that. Now, with all of our heart, and I think that the great power has arrived that when God, in so much as we're speaking this morning, has showed us so much and brought us to a certain, just up to a spot, just to push over that little hill, and that's all you need. And then away it goes. Uh, uh, going just like it was the same thing with the discernment, same thing by the prophetic to watch. I stand in Calgary. I beg your pardon. Uh, it was uh, the Queen City down in Regina. Regina. And Aaron Baxter was standing there and a bunch of us. And the Lord told me right there in the platform that it'll come to pass you'll know the very secret of their heart. And that's right. And I never thought of that in that manner. I walked up the platform that night with her and I started praying for the sick. And here come a man along this laid out his entire life. First time it ever happened. Just like that in a moment in a healing service. And then I looked out over the audience and here it began to come down over the audience. And they, Oh, when we reach the other side, the half has never yet been told of the things to watch out and see things in people's lives. I don't say nothing about it. Just let it alone. See, unless I'm really compelled to say something. And I, I look for this next to start like that. To see God in his own way, his own sovereign time to begin it. And it'll, it'll be a, another thing that will be, be a way beyond any of these other people. Amen. And uh, I'm looking for that to happen. And maybe... I uh, thought if I'd had a little healing service maybe next Sunday and then the following Sunday I'd probably be away with the kids and them because they got to go back and go to school. And then the next Sunday, I, of course, I'm up in Chicago at the meeting up there and then um, come back the following Monday to leave on Tuesday for, for Arizona for the kids to get back to school. Yeah, well, well, what'd you find, Pastor? <laughs> well, I've discovered something very strange. Good, that's very fine. Now, we want to hear about it. So now the, the Lord bless you all real, real good, and I uh, uh, hope to see you here next Sunday and Wednesday night. And listen, don't forget, these little churches like Brother Ruddle, Brother Jackson, Brother Pornell, and all those little brethren who are struggling hard. Amen. There, and they feel like that we are their, their, their sister church here, you see. We are kind of like a little mother group to them. That's where they were born out of here. Pastors and so forth. And this little fellow back here, brother, I made the other night over there, Alan. Little brother Alan. Uh, I hope brother Collins here will get with brother Alan. If he doesn't know him, they're both Methodist ministers. And uh, it's, it's seen uh, truth of word, which the, the organization of the Methodist church, which is a fine bunch of people in that Methodist church. But you never think they're not. They are. There's a fine bunch of people in that Catholic church. There's a fine bunch in the Presbyterian church and all those places there. It's men and women that are waiting to see that light flash over their path. Amen. You just keep flashing the light in humility, sweetness. Let's all grow closer to God by humbling ourselves. Yes. Definitely. Don't forget, this tabernacle will lose its strength. Remember that this is the target where Satan's got every gun in hell trained on him. He'll cause one person to do something that's contrary to what the other thinks. He's doing that. He's up to it. That's his business. If he can get somebody to say something, somebody to talk about another, say, well, listen, did you know so-and-so did? Don't you listen to it. Don't you listen to it at all. That's the devil. See, it's Satan. Don't you believe it. If there's anything that somebody's done wrong, pray for it. Don't pray in a selfish way. Say, I know it's my duty. I've got to pray for that, brother. You take it to your heart. Really down for that sister. And just talk and be real sweet. And the first thing you know, you find him right back in the service again. Because after all, we're headed towards the setting of the sun. The Lord Jesus will be coming one of these days. And you know, I think it'll be so sudden and so, so sweet. So 
there'll be 100 percent of the whole world will never know when that rapture takes place. It'll just go so quietly that nobody will know nothing about it. See? And there'll be, of course, the little groups will say, well now, so and so. Oh, they say this fanatic bunch over there said a group left from over there, and they, that's not so. They've just gone out somewhere. We've had that fanaticism, yeah. see? Uh, well, they stay in that little tabernacle in a place called Jeffersonville. There are so many of them members, it's missing. See, they just play that out. They'll say, oh, there's nothing to that, you see? I guess it'll be past, and they won't know it. Across the nation will come. Those who are dead in Christ will rise first. The rapture will take place. The church will be taken home, and then... The tribulation will set in and, oh, my, we don't want to be here during that time. I don't want to be here in the tribulation. No. God forbid that any of us ever be here during that time because he that's filthy is filthy still. He that's holy is holy still. He that's righteous is righteous still. There's no, the Lamb has come forth with his book of redemption. And the bride has been taken out, and those who turned it down has to go through a tribulation period, both Jew and Gentile. What a time of tribulation. I don't want that. Lord, sanctify me now. That's good Nazarene doctrine in it. Amen. And it's truth, too. Yeah. It's truth. That's right. Amen. Fill me now with your Holy Spirit, Lord. Take all the world out of me now, Lord. Don't go to heaven. As the old colored brother said, so I got my ticket in my hand. It's already punched. And when I come down to the river that morning, I don't want no trouble. <laughs> so that's about right. I, I don't want no trouble. Hold your ticket in your hand because we're going over. Amen. Just think of it. The great time of redemption is at hand. Amen. And now another thing. Brother, uh, what's his name up here at Utica? I think Brother Graham... Yeah. And another brother there that's pastoring there, a brother, or, uh, what, Shanks or something like oh, that, or Brother Saints. Snelling. Brother Snelling's a pastor yeah. altogether. Brother Snelling's a pastor up at Utica now. I think their prayer meeting is on Thursday night. Thursday night. Now, you know, it would be real nice if we would slip up there on Thursday night and show those fellows a little fellowship, see? And then when Brother Jackson, the times that he has this, if we just get a little group of us together and go... Just keep praying. Keep digging. Just don't stop. Just like when Elijah told him, he said, dig ditches out there. When you get down, you hit an old tin can and say, I'm too tired. Store it out of the way. Keep digging. <laughs> just keep digging because we got to dig. We just got to dig. That's all. Because if you, if you expect to miss the tribulation, you better start digging. Now, for myself, I'm preaching to myself there. I'm going to start digging deeper than I ever know. Uh, because I feel like that in the nation and around the world that this ministry will again, as it's known now about everywhere over the world, I, I must go again. Wife said to me the other morning, I said, I want you to go with me. When I leave, I'm going to leave around January, the Lord willing. I want to take a complete world tour all the way around. Amen. Come back and maybe have services in the United States sometime next summer. And she said, I'm too old to go. Well, I said, I went when I, about my last trip overseas was about eight years ago, and I feel like I'm in better shape now than I was eight years ago. Amen. Amen. I know more about it now. And then we got on the subject, if the Lord said, I'm going to lot you 25 years, you're not going to get feeble, you'll be able to go, and I'm going to lot you 25 years on earth, would you take from from birth to 25, or from 25 to 50, 50 to 75, or 75 to 100. Now, if any man is allowed at any time on earth will certainly do a most rational thing if he don't spend that time in service of God. I don't care what he does. Amen. Now, if you're going to be a heartbreak for the women or so forth, you better take that young age at first 25. See? If you're going to be a carpenter, a mechanic, or something, you better take the second 25. See? But I was thinking about what about me? What would I take? I'd take from 75 to 100. Uh, I'd be smarter, wiser. I'd be more settled. I'd know more about what I'm doing. I'm ten, 8 or 10 years older than the last time I was overseas. I won't jump in like I'm killing snakes. I know more about it. I know how, is it like a coon dog fighting a coon? See, you know about how to take a hold of it. You don't jump in there and scratch you up. No, it's tricks. 
and watch him what he does. And we learn more about the enemy. So we've got to find out all of his tactics and how he approaches and what he does. Learn his punches. Then you're trained to go in on him, you see. So I believe now, I told the wife I believe I'm in better shape now than I was when I was 40 years old and went over. Amen. And I'm 54. Now I believe if I live and can still get around as good as I can now, when I'm 100, if, I, if Jesus would tarry that long, I'd be in better shape than I am now to go. Because you know more about it. You know more about what to do and how to handle it. How to handle the situation. Amen. Take a lot of people now if you're going to get operated on. Say, say a new doctor just uh, graduated the other day and just come out of medical school. You never had an operation yet. Let him do it. Oh, no. You say nothing to do it. <laughs> Not that guy. No, sir. Yet, it old man I don't want him putting on a knife on me. Well, I'd really go down here and get so-and-so. I know he's had a lot of operations. He knows how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the idea. You think about this, but what about that soul? I want somebody who knows where they're at. Amen. Amen. Knows the road who's traveling. Amen. Yes, indeed. God. God bless you. All right, Brother Neville. Get up here now. God bless Brother Neville. <laughs> Don't forget now. Next time. I was just uh, had a surprise in my heart for the thing because in myself I had recognized I esteemed the ministry of my many brethren. Outside of there, before Brother Branham come, I said, now, I don't know if he'll minister tonight. I was talking to Dr. Lee Vail here, and I said, I was in the meeting at Middletown, Ohio, and you were the one that talked through the day. And I said, I deeply appreciated the meeting, along with the teaching that Brother Vail did over there in conjunction with the meeting at Middletown. Yes. And I said, I esteem the servants of God, and uh, one of us, I said, whoever preaches, it always does the other one good, because the ministry is all inspired by the same spirit. Amen. Amen. And uh, there isn't any, any selfishness or ambitiousness in me, and I delight to welcome the ministers of God, especially who are cooperating together with this and in it together with us. I delight to hear from them. Amen. So I asked Dr. Lee Vale, I said, would you minister if Brother Branham does? Now, Brother Branham didn't, he might have known this. No, I didn't say anything about it. Amen. 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 So I asked uh, Brother Vale tonight if he would minister for it in case that Brother Branham didn't because he's associated with him in the meetings and he knows about the way, this way, and we're glad to have Brother Vale. I appreciate him and respect him as well as I do any of the other ministers and like I do all the others and so if he will come tonight and speak for us I'd be delighted to have him to do it. God bless him. and let's pray for him. Brother Vale. Some of you have never heard him and I trust that you'll pray for him. <laughs> I apologize to the audience. I didn't know what that now that this was fixed up. God bless you, Brother Vale. It wasn't fixed up. He said it didn't come. <laughs> Good, that's fine. I can hear him myself. Brother Vail spoke many times ahead of me in the meetings and, and so forth. He managed the meetings for a long time. It was fine. Brother done a swell job. And I'm sure this audience is always glad to hear Brother Vail when he speaks. Amen. Lord bless Brother Vail. So much was said, uh, uh, I couldn't say nothing to make it any better. Uh, and I truly believe that it was the Lord that worked this out for Brother Vail to bring this man. Amen. After this morning. Yes, so do You I. see, it has to work that way. We, we accept that from God. Yes. Well, there's so many things he was saying. I, I, I have 20 sermons go down there off of what he said. I was thinking here of one little illustration to back up what he said. Now, we look at this watch to find out what time it is. Unless that every instrument in that watch is coordinating one with the other, we'll never know the correct time. Amen. Is that right? Yeah. And that takes all of us, all together. If we want to see the third pull really do something for God, it's coordination with everyone of us together to humble ourselves before God and confess our wrongs and pray and believe God for these things. I truly believe that what Brother Vail said is the truth that God... It will never put his spirit in a holy, unrighteous, disobedient temple. No, it's got to come in 
the, the way of the cleansing of our hearts from all guile and iniquity, that we might be pure before God, that he might work his pure Holy Spirit through us Amen. to bring these things to pass. I, I think that when you go home tonight, if you read that little book of Jude, you just learn a whole lot now of what Brother Baal has said. He said, I earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints that got away from us. How a man of corrupt mind and so forth had come in and beguiled him away from the from the real things of Amen. God. And God can only operate as we let him operate. And uh, so many wonderful things about saying, uh, you know, people are, want power. Yes. And really, they don't know what power is. Amen. They, they don't really know what, what, what goes with it. The, the way up is down. Yes. Always, if you want power, see how humble you can get. Just get away from all your worldly thinking and humble yourself before God and then you've got more power than the man that runs all over the building and makes a big lot of noise. Yeah, see? Because you have been able to conquer yourself and commit yourself to Christ. You see? To humble yourself before Him. That's really power. You show me a church that's humble. Real humble. Not a uh, arrogant a church, just a sweet, humble church. I'll show you a church that has the favor and power of God. Amen. That's, Amen. Right. That's the thing it takes. Hum humility. Humbling ourselves before God. Letting God just work through us. You don't have to make a lot of noise. Uh, sometimes, as the farmer said, he went out to the field with his wagon. And every time he hit a bump, it just rattled and went on. But when he come back, he hit the same bump and didn't make no noise at all because it was loaded with good things. So I think that's about right. That we get filled up with the good things of God. That the fruit of the Spirit might be known to us. As he referred so much to 1 Corinthians 13 there. How that though I give my body be burnt and have all these things and have not charity, it's nothing. It profits me nothing. You see. We want to do that. Above all things, it's our individual souls that we're responsible before God. Yeah. See? It's, it's you going to heaven. It isn't whether I go or he goes, it's you go. It's you first. And you've got to look this out and come sweet before the Lord. And I've always found out that the man that humbles himself is the man that God exalts. When you take a person with his chest out, knows everything, you can't tell him nothing, and he's arrogant, and, and well, that, that's the person that never gets anywhere. But you take that person that humbles themselves and walks sweetly. I was talking to a man the other day. It's, they just organized a church up at the, uh, uh, pulled out of an organization that they'd been, uh, what's well, it's Brother Bose. And then the church where they'd, they'd had that great church there for so long, and the Lord is blessing, and the people got to a place that they want to polish up like the rest of them, and want to throw it into an organization. And when they did, it just, those humble Christians in there did not want that, all their lives had been taught against it, so they walked away from it. Now they've got a group, and the Lord has blessed them, until they're coming in up into a big place now again for a church now that puts up about four or five thousand people and they're starting over and they come to me and said brother Bram sitting right there in, in the office the church office the other day and he said uh, one of the leaders for the cross and them said what must we do I said find a man to be the shepherd that has no reputation in all denominations, just a real good, genuine, sweet, humble brother that lives a life. God will take care of the rest of us. I said, a good pastor that will just feed the sheep and be humble and think God will do the rest of you. Not some big know it alls come in, he's going to put this in order and this has to be this way and cutting things right. I said, it'll never work. You just got to do it. That's it. Every piece in the church must work together. And you must keep up your part of it so we see what time we're living in. We may be closer than we think we are. Amen. Now we appreciate Brother Vail, don't we? Amen. The Lord bless you, Brother Vail. Thank you. And we thank the Lord for bringing this great message to us tonight. And I uh, got a note a few minutes ago. One of the sisters had had something she wanted to tell in a dream. Uh, if you just write it out, tell me, Sister I. Um, the, they give her some dreams that has been absolutely true. We don't accept all dreams. No. But when they're of God, we want to know it. It's God talking to us. Like everything speaks of tongues, we don't believe it. But when there's an interpretation comes that tells us something that's going to happen, we see it happen, and we thank the Lord for it. See, we want to keep it running smoothly, sweetly, and in order. 
uh, of the Lord. So just remember that your part may be the mainspring, or it may be the little, uh, some little hand or some little part of the winding stem, whatever it may be, or it may be the hands on the face of the clock that tells the time. But whatever it is, it takes us all working together in harmony with the gospel of Jesus Christ to bring this to pass. Just think, if gifts is so great, what we call power, and Paul said, though I have faith that I can move a mountain and have not charity, I am nothing. Amen. Think of that. And though you say, well, though I, I understand, I wish I knew the Bible, though I understand all the mysteries of God, See? And still, though I can do it and have not charity, I, I'm not. See? I haven't got no worry yet. See? The main thing is love God and humble yourself with it. Yeah. Now, surely, uh, after all these years on the field and around the world and seeing different people, I ought to know a little bit about the gate to enter in at. And if you want to get somewhere with God, never let an arrogant spirit ever come around you. Don't let no malice come in, no matter what anybody's done. If they are wrong, don't you never build up a complex against that person. You'd be sweet and kind. Remember, God loved you when you were in sin. And if the Spirit of God's in you, you love the other person when he's in wrong. Just pray for them and love one another above everything. Love God and love one another and be humble with God and around one another. And God will bless us and it's hard to tell what he will do. Usually when church begins to get in numbers and gets to getting a little bigger or something like that, then they get away from that real thing. The real thing. You know what brought these things to pass? When I first started and the Lord appeared to me down the river and told me that his brother Dale saw that, I believe in a paper in Canada, many years ago where that angel of the Lord appeared on the river down there. It was on Associated Press. Mystic Light over a local minister a while back now. And, and you know what did that? When we had the tent meeting just across the street, a tent that seated about oh, 2,500 people. Ministers come from everywhere and said, Brother, come here a minute. I was just a boy, but or just a kid. And he said, How do you keep those people in one accord? They love one another till they, I've never seen people love one another. That's the law. That's what this church was established upon that. Godly, brotherly love for one another. I've seen them even shake hands with one another, leaving the place and cry like babies. To leave one another. They love one another that well. And I could go to their house to visit them in times the Bible was laying open and stained with tears, come in at night time where fathers and mothers was gathered together, and their little children around on the floor kneeling around, and fathers and mothers on their knees crying and praying. And I'd stand at the door and wait, wait, wait. And they didn't stop praying. I just sat down on the steps and started praying myself. Wait for them, see? And that, that was why, and they love one another. They love one another. We used to stand and sing that old song, Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love. The fellowship of kindred mind is like to that above. When we asunder part, it gives us inward pain, but we shall still be joined in heart and hope to meet again. I say this with great joy in my heart to Christ. Many of them are sleeping around in these graves, Mark, tonight, waiting for that great resurrection where we'll meet together again. Let not that spirit ever depart from this place. If it ever does, then I don't care how eloquent your pastor might be, how well he might bring the word of God, the spirit of God is grieved away. When we can have all things and fellowship in common, and love one another, then God will work with us. And we're keeping time that the people come by and say, if you want to see a church that's really humble, a church that really loves God, drop in up there at that tabernacle one time and watch them. Look at the care they have for one another, the respect when the gospel is being preached, how reverent, how everything, just in order. Then they can look and see what time we're living. You'll see the Spirit of God moving among you. Great signs and wonders and things will be taking place. If the thing's working together, it's telling the time. But if it isn't working, then time has stopped. It won't tell the time no more. So if we want to know what time we're living, just start everybody working together in the gospel, loving one another, loving God, and the hands itself will tell the time what we're living. Amen. Do you believe that? Amen. 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 The Lord bless you real richly. Don't forget now, get around this weekend. If you know any of the sick people that's coming in, tell them when he comes. Say, dear, I, have, uh, I want to ask you, we're having a uh, prayer for the sick Sunday morning over at the tabernacle. And um, uh, you've been sick for a while. 
Now, uh, well, I want to go. I've always wanted to go. Now, I just heard a message Sunday night from a brother there that how we must confess our faults one to another and pray one for another that we might be healed. James 5, 14, 13, 14, 15. See? That we must confess our faults one to another before we even come for healing. Yeah. Confess our faults one to another and pray one for the other. See? See that? This is exactly what he's talking about tonight. Brings back the Beatitude in with Mark 16. Amen. When that together, you've got it. Then healings take place. Look at Jesus. Nothing but one bundle of love. See, he was God manifested. He, God expressed himself through him. No wonder miracles and things happen. His humble life and consecrated life to come from, to, from being God to be a man here on earth to express God to himself. That's what made him what he was. I've always said what made Jesus God to me was the way he humbled himself. He was so great. And yet he was so small. That's right. The Lord bless you real good. Now, let's stand up and for the dismissal. Um, let's just try that. You might not know it's the church. That blessed be the tired of Let's sing that one time, will you? Yeah, give us a part. Bless be